And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at an expansion for Captain Sonar Upgrade 1. Crew Eyes Only! This is an expansion for Captain Sonar, which is an amazingly fun game. One of the most fun games you'll ever play for eight players. This adds more options. Let's take a look and see what they are. So there are five new scenarios here, which is really a lot of cool scenarios. You could just use them as a, as a regular map, I suppose. But this is here first is the golf map. Now the way that the golf map works is there's two spots on here. You can't start there. You got to start in one and nine. By the way, I'm only showing you the the real time one for each map because that's what I'm gonna oh I'm ever gonna play. But you start in one or nine, and anytime you go here, you have to say archer stop over, and then you can repair one damage, which is a pretty big thing, or you can fill all your gauges. And you can only go to each one once per turn. Of course, you might guess that's where your opponent's going, and so head that way to get ready to shoot him, or even drop a mine there. So it kind of adds a little bit of back and forth on the game. Here, you have three spots on the board. You can't start in those three sectors. This is the hotel map. And when you land on a colored space, you can refill those gauges. So this lets you refill your red ones, your green ones, and your yellow ones. This India map is probably the meanest map in the game. I mean, meanest to a person. You notice there's a lot of little shallow areas on the board. And when you move out of a shallow water space, you have to cross off an extra spot in the reactor. So this game is for tough people only. But of course, there's also fewer islands, so there's that. Juliet, again, there's no real special uh, rules here, except there's just a gazillion islands. This one's easy to find the other person, but a lot harder to hide for both teams. And then finally, we have the Kilo map. This has really strong currents. If you're on one of these dots and you move with the current, you have to move two spaces, which could make you crash in an island. It shouldn't because you should have some heads up on that happening, but if so, you take a damage and you can never go against it. If you move in that direction, I'll let you move an extra space. You move two spaces, and you, but you only cross off one space on each of the things. Now, um, there's also an optional rule included with the game that basically says if you try to use a system that it does no, that no one has that, that you can't activate you take a damage i guess this is some people needed this rule i don't think it's that big of a deal i i don't i would never use it myself but then the game also by the way comes with more markers always a good thing but it comes with special upgrades and this is the kind of neat thing this is like the rule sheet i'm showing you but during setup each person is going to secretly pick one of these special upgrades and then you're going to you know basically tell what upgrade you've picked. You're just picking them simultaneously. And then you can activate your special upgrade. Um, and it's really cool. Like this one here, you can launch a Kraken missile at any spot on the map. It doesn't do as much damage, but it can hit anywhere. This one has a polarizing mine, which hits all, all different directions, a chaos polarizing mine. This is a super cavitating torpedo. This lets you shoot six spaces away. So that's pretty, that's pretty cool. And it does two damage on indirect hit. That's really neat. This has a hacking system here. You can announce one weapon system and you reset that gauge to zero and the enemy has to erase all the marks in their system. That one is not as fascinating to me, but it's kind of a, a negative one. I mean, I want to use these, these missiles, not stop your opponent. Or here, this kind of stops your opponent countermeasure, so that's kind of cool. They're about to shoot you. And then a repair system where you can put one of your systems out of service, um, basically to repair one damage in your submarine. I don't know how often you use that. I have not yet picked that one. I've definitely used this torpedo. I've used the mines and the Kraken missiles. Those are my three top choices. After that, I would pick the countermeasures. I might use this one. I would probably not use repair system because I want to destroy the enemy's submarine, not repair my own damage. But these give you more options. So here we just have a bunch of extra mats. This all easily fits into the box. You have two of these to pass around, you know, to explain what the new rules are. And it is cool that they gave you more markers, but that's pretty much, that's what's in the box. So really, this is not necessary, right? This is, this is for Captain Sonar fans only, but definitely for me worth getting. The extra marker is a big deal. You can buy a marker somewhere else, but it's a nice addition to the box. More importantly, the new scenario boards. You know, because you play in these same scenario boards all the time. The new scenario boards, I, even though I think those other weapons are cool and it's good to have those, 
The new scenario boards add a minor rule at best and are really easy. You could play those with first time players. The special equipment and stuff, that's really cool, but you're gonna have to constantly explain what they are. So once each team has picked the ones that they're gonna use, I think I would be very clear and say, this is what we're using, here's the rules for ours, here's the rules for yours. You could even play that you both have the same thing that you can use. But like this Kraken missile that can hit anywhere on the board and do one damage, that's pretty neat, you know? But you have to hit the opponent directly. But it also means you can run from them, figure out where they are, and peg them with that torpedo. That's cool. On the other hand, the super cavitating torpedo lets you follow the person and do more damage. I kind of uh, tilt towards that one. And the mine that does a, a shockwave, that's great, unless of course it hits you. But these are some neat things to add. So this is definitely advanced, right? I wouldn't ever play these with people who've never played Captain Sonar before, but between these and the scenarios, this adds a ton of extra stuff to a game that's already immensely fun. So high thumbs up for me. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Boop. Boop.